There was so much hope, so much optimism after the march on Washington. When people left, as Dr. King suggested, we went back home, back to the heart of the Deep South. So many of us went into the state of Mississippi. We went into Alabama. We went to Selma. In Selma, only 2.1% of African Americans were registered to vote. The only time you could even attempt to register to, to vote was the first and third Mondays of each month. You had to stand in line, get a copy of the so-called literacy test, and hundreds and thousands of people would fail the so-called literacy test. They were told they could not read or write well enough. African-American lawyers, doctors, teachers. So we stored a series of demonstrations, standing in line at the courthouse. One evening, there was a demonstration for the right to vote nearby Selma. A confrontation occurred. And a young man tried to protect his mother. He was shot in the stomach, and a few days later, he died at a local hospital in Selma. We made a decision to attempt to march from Selma to Montgomery, to dramatize to the nation and to the world that people of color wanted to register to vote. We start walking. I was one of the leaders of that effort. I was wearing a backpack before it became fashionable to wear backpacks. In this backpack, I had two books. I thought we were going to be arrested and that we were going to go to jail, so I wanted to have something to read in jail. I wanted to have something to eat in that backpack. I had an apple and I had an orange. Since I thought we were going to be arrested and go to jail, and I'd be in jail with my friends, my colleagues, and neighbors, I wanted to be able to brush my teeth. I had toothpaste and toothbrush. We get to the highest point on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Down below, we saw a sea of blue, Alabama State Troopers. And we continued to walk. We came within hearing distance of the State Troopers. And a man spoke up and said, I'm Major John Cloud of the Alabama State Troopers. This is an unlawful march. It would not be allowed to continue. I give you three minutes to disperse and return to your homes or to your church. And a young man walking beside me by the name of Jose William from Dr. King's organization said, Major, give us a moment to kneel and pray before we can pass word back for people to kneel and pray. The Major said, Troopers advance. And you saw these men putting on their gas masks. They came toward us, beating us with night sticks, tramping us with horses, and releasing the tear gas was hit in the head by a state trooper with a nightstick. My legs went from under me. I thought I saw death. I thought I was going to die. I thought it was the last nonviolent protest of me. I don't recall how I made it back across that bridge, across the Alabama River, through the streets of Selma, back to that little church. But I do recall being back at the church it's full to capacity. More than 2,000 people on outside trying to get in to protest what had happened. And someone asked me to say something, and I stood up and said something like, I don't understand it. How President Johnson can send troops to Vietnam. And can I send troops to Selma, Alabama to protect people who only desires to register to vote? And the next thing I knew, I'd been admitted to the Good Samaritan Hospital there in Selma, Alabama, with 16 other people. And the next morning, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his colleague, the Reverend Ralph Abernathy, came to visit us in the hospital. And Dr. King said, don't worry, we will make it from Selma to Montgomery if we get a Voting Rights Act passed. And he told us that he had urged religious leaders to, to come to Selma. So on Tuesday, March 9th, more than a thousand ministers, priests, rabbis, and nuns came to Selma, and they marched to the point where we had been beaten two days earlier. And that Tuesday night, one of the young ministers who went out with two others to find something to eat, and on the way back from the little restaurant, 
They were attacked by members of the Klan. This young minister, James Reeb, was from Boston. He was so severely beaten, he was taken to a hospital in Birmingham, Alabama, where he died two days later. Um, Selma gave us the voting rights act. The way Birmingham gave us the civil rights act and the march on Washington gave us the civil rights act. If it hadn't been for Selma, hadn't been for the march on Washington, we wouldn't be where we are today. And there would be no Barack Obama as president of the United States of America.